hello welcome back to my channel today i will be sharing a book haul i love watching book hauls because i love to see new books that people got or books that they've wanted for a while and finally splurged and got and that is me in this situation these are books that i've recently got at a used bookstore and barnes and noble i will be doing a huge amazon book haul hopefully really soon i just need to bite the bullet and hit order on a bunch of books that i want from amazon because typically books are cheaper on amazon so that is gonna come very soon but i'm gonna share a bunch of books that i got recently there's a lot of them <laughs> Let's just hop on into it. I'm gonna start with books that I got at a used bookstore called Got Wolves. I go to this bookstore in Macon. I think they do have in a few other locations in Georgia. You can trade in books and get store credit. For example, if you have a $100 store credit and you wanna buy $100 worth of books, you're able to use $50 out of your $100 store credit, so then you'd only have to pay $50. They have this deal where you get half off everything, but you can only use half of the store credit, if that makes any sense. It's a fantastic deal. I had about $150 when I went to Gotwell's recently, and I still have 100 left because I think I only bought $100 worth of books, but I paid 50 for it. And that's just an amazing deal to get $100 worth of books for 50 bucks. And they're already marked down, so it's probably more like $200 worth of books for $50. It's amazing. I highly recommend you go to any used bookstore around you. Anyway, I digress. I will start with the books I got at Gotwell's. First things first, I got Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. This is a psychological thriller. I read, oh, you can't see it. I read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. That was a very popular psychological thriller floating around booktube and book talk. I really didn't like it though, and I need to give this author a second chance. I've heard her books are really good. I just did not enjoy Rock, Paper, Scissors. This one sounds really interesting. It's about a girl who is in a coma after an accident. It says she can't move, she can't speak, she can't open her eyes, she can hear everyone around her, but they have no idea. So it alternates between her her present self who's paralyzed and the week before her accident and then I think there are some childhood diaries is what it says. I know there's always going to be a huge plot twist in all of Alice Feeney's books. Pretty much any psychological thriller in general has a huge plot twist and this seems like a short easy read. The front is kind of creepy because there's just a woman like falling. Also what is she wearing? She's wearing a t-shirt, nice skirt, and tennis shoes. I, I don't understand. Anyway that's the first book I got. The next two books I don't know why I'm hesitant to talk about them. Colleen Hoover was a really popular author several years ago on booktube. Now it seems like there's a bunch of hate around her books. I don't know what the controversy is. I've only read one Colleen Hoover book and it was a while ago. I felt like it was a little too mature for me at that moment. I have matured in my reading quite a bit. So I'm ready to try her other books out. I read Slammed, which is the first book in her young adult series. I think that's the first book she ever wrote or ever published. I found an age rating graphic on Colleen Hoover's website and I chose two books that were from the lowest age rating, meaning they should be the most appropriate. I don't know much about them, but I got Heartbones and Without Merit. These were both only $8 and with the discount they were four bucks each. That's a steal. I think this one is more of a romance set in a country setting. Was it Texas? Yeah, that's country. So a country romance. Without Merit, I think is a family drama about a girl named Merit. I think she's caught up in some lies. I don't know, I think it'll be interesting. When I read Slammed, it was really easy to read. Her writing was really simple to understand. I don't know, I got these because I've been wanting to try out some Colleen Hoover books, but I think there's a lot of controversy around her and I don't understand why. Maybe I need to dig in deeper to figure out what in the world's going on. So I don't know. At Gotwell's, they also have new stock books that you don't get any discount on. These were used, but they did have new copies of these. They were 15 bucks instead of the $8. So I just went for the used books because they don't look that used. You're not allowed to have any writing in the books that you give them. So there's not any writing on it. It might look a little creased, but that's not bad at all. Okay, the next book I got is very out of my wheelhouse. I don't typically steer towards general fiction or historical fiction. This is Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. I read The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. That was a historical fiction book. It was good. It made me really sad because it was set in World War II. It gave you different perspectives than what you normally get in a history class, so I actually appreciated that, but it, it was really sad. This one is a story of friendship between two girls that are complete opposites. You follow their lives for 30 years. Their friendship was really strong, and then something big happens. It's like a big betrayal, and then you learn how they deal with that. This is a TV show. My sister-in-law is actually watching the TV show now. She likes it. I don't know if the book lines up with a TV show, but I'm interested to see. I like to read books before I watch the TV show or movie based on them. Typically I do that. 
So I'm gonna try this out before I watch the TV show. All right, the next book I got is a very summery book. It is called Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrand. Ellen Hildebrand is known for being a very beachy, summery author. I think all of her books are set in Nantucket. I read one book by her, I think. I read The Hotel Nantucket by her, and that was a really summery book. I liked it. That sounded questionable. I did like it. I think I might have given it three stars. It was mediocre. I wanted to try some more, and the cover looks really fun. It just looks like a good old wholesome time with your friends. Reading the back, it looks like it's about a family who normally goes to their grandmother's house in Nantucket, but this year, nothing is the same. It goes into the different family members' lives and what they've been doing. I think it's just a general fiction. There might be some room. I don't even think there's romance in here. I don't know if it's a mystery. I don't really know. I don't know much about it, but I know that her books are just great for summer, and I definitely want to read it. Probably not in June, but maybe July. Okay, the next book I got I've read before. This is Breaking Dawn. This is the last book in the Twilight Saga. I got this because now all of my books are matching. I had all of them in this edition, but Breaking Dawn I had found in an updated edition and I just did not like how it didn't match at all. And considering this was $4, I thought what the heck, why not just get the book that matches the whole set? So now my whole set is matching. I want to reread the Twilight series though, so I know this will come in handy. I might want to annotate, question mark. I have never annotated a book Actually, I, I lied. I have annotated books for school. I've never annotated a book just for fun on my own. I think it'd be fun to re, sorry, my knee's just like chilling. I think whenever I reread this series, it would be fun to annotate. Pick out quotes that I like, pick out things I know will be important. I don't know, we'll see if I get into my annotating journey. All right, the next two books are an interesting pick for me, probably from your perspective. From my perspective, I completely understand why I got these books. Something you should know about me is that I love to watch or read anything that takes me out of reality. Any movie or TV show that's not realistic, I like that compared to realistic movies or TV shows. Same with books. I like to be taken to a new world. Now that doesn't mean it has to be fantasy, but I like to be put in a story that I know is not realistic for my life. I think that's why I liked doing theater. I've done theater growing up and I like to be put in a different situation into a different character's life that I know will never be mine. I think it's just fun to play out different stories. I think that's why I've always loved reading. Some people love reading realistic books. I have family members that would rather read a non-fiction book or a general fiction book that makes sense. However, I'm on the other side of the spectrum and I love books that just take me out of reality, transport me to a new world. And that's I think why I loved the Twilight series because it was so unrealistic. It was so cringy. Why did I fall in love with vampires? I don't know. So that was a long-winded way of explaining why I got the Vampire Diaries books. <laughs> these are the original books. These came out, I think, in 1991 was when the first book came out. There have now been other sets within the big series, but these two, well, there's four stories, but two different books. There's two stories in this one and two stories in this one. These are all part of the original series, and then there's extra that come later. But I just wanted to start out with the original series. The first one's called The Awakening, and then you have The Struggle. So The Awakening and The Struggle are in this book and the Fury and Dark Reunion are in this book. I don't know why I really liked the world of vampires in Twilight and I thought I would like this. I've heard really good things about the TV show and I wanted to read the books before I watched the TV show. I like things with tension and angst and I think this is gonna give me what I'm expecting. And considering they were three bucks, might as well get them. Okay, the last set of books that I got from Gotwells, the used bookstore, is the Shadow and Bone Trilogy. This is a TV show, actually. So yes, I wanna watch the TV show after I read these. There's a really popular duology by this same author. It's the Six of Crows duology. Some people say you don't have to read the Shadow and Bone Trilogy before you read Six of Crows. They're just in the same world, but the stories aren't connected. I do wanna read the Shadow and Bone Trilogy first, just to introduce me to the world in this fantasy series. It sounds very similar to Red Queen, reading the back of the first one. A girl named Alina discovers that she has powers. She's trained with the military elite and their leader thinks that she can destroy the shadow fold, which is this area of darkness that they think is crawling with monsters. I know it's crazy, but I really like fantasy books. And I think this will be good, but I've heard mixed reviews on the whole trilogy and we shall see what I think. Now we will go to Barnes and Noble. No, 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 I'm sorry. I actually went to Books A Million and then Barnes and Noble recently. So I'll share what I got from Books A Million first. I got the Hunger Games set plus this journal that was in the set. This was on major sale. I think this might've been 15 bucks for all of this. The journal is unnecessary. I got into the Hunger Games series really late. I read them a year ago, I think. 
I really liked them. I got them from the library, so I never had my own copy, and I'm glad I have my own copy now. I also got The Kiss Curse, which will not be read anytime soon. This is a Halloween book. It is the second book after The X Hex, which blew up for Halloween time reading. Halloween time reading? I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I want to get The X Hex, which is before The Kiss Curse. I think it's about a witch. It's like you're living in Halloween town, and I think it would be really fun to read in Oct- Why did I just forget? what month Halloween's in, October. Come on, I'm dumb. Okay, but this was bargain price at Books A Million. It was $5.97. I couldn't pass it up. All right, those are the books I got at Books A Million. And then recently I went to Barnes & Noble and I love the buy one, get one half off table. First I got The Selection, which is the first book in the Selection series. This was really popular years ago. I never got into it when it came out. It came out 2012. How old was I? Oh, that was 10 years, no, 11 years ago? Oh, I feel so old. Okay, basically this girl is selected, duh. Selected to be a part of this competition to be the wife of the prince. That sounded really weird, to marry the prince. She's in love with someone else. It's a love triangle. It is dystopian fantasy. You know, I really do not appreciate the cover though. I don't like, like the dress is pretty. I feel like we could just have the dress and not the random like half of the girl's face. Anyway, this is a part of a bigger series. There's one, two, three, four, five, six books. It had been so hard for me to find the first book. I could find all the others, but not the first one whenever I went to Books A Million or Barnes & Noble. I'm so glad this was on the buy one, get one 50% off table. The last book I got is Firekeeper's Daughter. I have heard nothing about this. It's the monthly pick for Barnes & Noble. I looked it up, it has extremely high ratings on Goodreads, and when I read about it, I can't figure out the genre. It seems general fiction, romance, and mystery all combined. This girl named, what's her name? It starts with a D. Donis, D-A-U-N-I-S. This girl is mixed up with a lot of family secrets, there is a romance, and then she goes undercover after witnessing a crime. I don't even know what this book is about. It sounds really interesting though, but I don't really know if it fits into a genre. Yes, those are all the books I got. I've heard people say on booktube that buy Buying books is a separate hobby than reading books, and I completely agree. Buying books is just wonderful. It is its own hobby. I completely agree with that statement. The Bible verse I want to talk about today is Romans 5, 8. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the gospel. This is the good news. God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, and we can accept him as our savior, and become a Christian, and become a believer, and live our lives with the Lord. It's just so amazing how God loved us that he didn't give us what we deserve. We deserved death, but he gave us grace and he gave us life through Jesus Christ. And this is a beautiful reminder of that. Please comment down below any books you want to buy or books that you have bought recently. Anything at all, you can comment it down below. I hope you'll have a wonderful, wonderful day and be a blessing to others today. Bye guys. <laughs>